Welcome to this sermon from Silver Lake Baptist Church. Our mission is to celebrate the greatness of God with all we are for the joy, hope, and renewal of our community. We are so glad you have chosen to listen to our message. We pray you will be blessed by your time with us today. Good morning. Good morning. You guys awake this morning? Hey, Pastor George, it's good to see you and your wife all the way from Kenya. So, um, anyway, um, so I don't look. I got one note thing I was wanting to share and see if I. Where did I write it down? Ever do that? Okay, I'm good to go. Okay, Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for just being here with us. And thank you for your grace and goodness and peace and hope and love and all that you are. Holy Spirit, speak through me this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. So this morning I'm going to dive in pretty quick. Is it like I keep watching these YouTube videos sometimes? And usually it's like they're, they're trying to talk about my Oklahoma Sooners or something like that, or recruiting, and then it's like for 15 minutes they talk about stupid stuff. And I'm just like, just get on with it. I don't care about your dog or your cat or, or your mother-in-law or whatever. Just get to the Sooners, right? So I'm going to, it's like, I wonder if I'm doing that, right? So I'm going to get to the, I'm going to get to the meat of the stuff and, and get, get to it. Last week, last couple weeks I've been talking about the Hebrews letters and seeing Jesus in, in um, you know, through creation, right? Through the very first word, we went bait, bait, right? Seen a leaf, a leaf, and hey, hey, which means, you know, it represents Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right there from the get-go, man. Like, they didn't even waste any time. They're just like, we're going to jump right in. And so, anyway, I, I love the Father telling a story like that, but then also, we studied gravity a little bit. Remember, I put the formula up and I thought, I'll fool someone, but I got too many smart people here, right? <laughs> and so I was like, man, they know what that formula is. And, and it made me think a lot about, because um, like I love science. I, lo- I love all kinds of things about science, from Newton to Einstein. Like Einstein and Tesla, are, I think, are some of the most brilliant dudes that were ever on the planet, you know, God really blessed them. But I was reading the story about Einstein, how, how he got interested in science was he had, a, he was asking, he kept asking, he was riding his bike and he had a light on the front of his bike and he wondered if he went the speed of light, if his headlight on his bike would still shine. And, and so, so he just kept thinking about it, mulling it, mulling it, mulling it, and then he was doing something out of the blue and it just come to him. And so he literally had to go, it was 10 years, like 10 years, all he thought about was this problem. And so he literally, like I believe God just showed it to him. You know, it was a gift from God and God uses it still today, the stuff that, that he, he used because Newton was matter moves matter and he was like, no, it's energy. Everything's energy. Well, nobody come to the realization that everything was spirit, right? So like he, he, he didn't even know how to explain what he was shown, so he had to go to his wife, who was really good at math, and, and she helped him, um, I think she was a professor, if I, don't, if I remember right, and so she had to help him get back into school, and he had to go to school and learn math, because I got something in common with him, we both flunked um, freshman algebra. <laughs> so, so they're like, who do you think you are, Einstein? I said, I got a lot in common with him, <laughs> right? But he had to go to school literally and learn math so he could fulfill and explain to people what, what God had birthed in him. I believe God birthed that in him, right? And so we think of light, and so I was talking about gravity, and, and um, who discovered gravity? Anybody know? God. God, God right? <laughs> Someone's like the apple fall hit someone on the head or something like that, right? And I'm like, you know what? There's a lot of apples that probably fell and hit people on the head. I'm pretty sure they knew don't jump off the cliff. So I'm sure a lot of people knew about gravity before, before a scientist started claiming credit, right? But um, I was look, thinking of gravity and, and going the speed of light. And as you go the speed of light, remember I was talking about how, how whatever's going, you know, once you go faster than the speed of light, it makes everything heavier and attracts everything to it. And Jesus says, I am the light of the world. 
and it made me think a lot because he said, says that, um, you know, if we lift him up, he'll draw all men unto us. No, unto our church, unto our country, unto our government. No, unto who? Unto him, right? And everything's about him. So the Bible says in him we live and move and have our being. And so Christ in us is a hope of glory. And then I was showing you that that gloriness, that glory, that weightiness that's kavod, right? And it comes from the very first letter of kavod is cough. And it's not like, <coughs> you know, I got to quit smoking because I'm coughing way too much, you know, or, or I got sick, so I'm coughing. No, not that kind of cough, right? Um, it's um, like the Hebrew letter is like a backward C and it's got a dot in the middle. And I love that. And all the, all the rabbis talk about how when, when you bless your kids on, on Shavuot, or Shav, not Shavuot, um, Shabbat, that you cup your hand. May the Lord bless you like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And may you be the head, not the tail, above only and not beneath. And what is it? What's it, what's it reminding us? It's reminding us of what? Jesus said in Matthew, he said, said when you go to pray, he said, go into your closet right? And what you do in your closet will come out. You're like, Pastor James, I don't believe you on that. Let me read this real quick. Because I think that this is really, really powerful because I think we don't, I think we skip over a lot of stuff and we just see it from a Western point of view. And this is an Eastern minded book, right? And so um, <clears throat> God can speak to us in any language though, however, do you believe that? So his words is word. But it says this in Matthew 6, verse 5. I think it's 5. I can't see the little number that good. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on, on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father, who is unseen. Now, what's it? Now, listen to this. He's saying, go into your room. Go, go into your place. Where is he? The Bible says that we're the temple of what? Holy Spirit. The Bible says Christ in us is what? The hope, hope of glory. Why do we close our eyes when we pray? I thought it was just so I could scare other drivers. <laughs> like, you ever, like, do you ever pray when you're going down the road? You close your eyes and you're like, oh, Jesus, you know, and then... Then pretty soon people are honking at you and running off the road and then right? No, that's not why that's not why we it's fun, but that's not why we do it. Right? So the reason we close our eyes when, when I close my eyes when I pray, I was, I was like, you know what? I'm I'm getting alone and I'm realizing, you know what? He's not a God far off. The Bible never says that he's a God far off. In fact, it says completely the opposite, right? And so when we think of God, like I grew up thinking, you know, do good, get good, do bad, get beat. You never could do good enough. If you did, there's this big God who's way up off in the sky, and he's just waiting for you to mess up so you, he can pounce on you and hit you over the head. I could, you guys hear what I'm saying? And it, 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 was, it was a religious notion, but it's not a right notion of who God is. And I thank God that I was raised in the church, even though that it was a little bit harder, harsher and a little bit off, it still led me to God. So God uses all those things. So we don't judge people. We, we just share our heart and let God open the door for people. But he's not like, it was more like Zeus. Anybody here a Zeus? Right? That's who we think God is. We, we don't think he's the loving father. We think he's Zeus. You, you know what? You mess up, I'm going to knock you down. You know, I can't wait till you mess up. You know, if you do good, then I'm going to be good to you. You do bad, I'm going to be bad to you. And that's not the gospel at all. That's mythology. Right? And then people get in, hear that, and then they start running from God. And we're like, why are you running from me? Oh, you know, that's not a heavenly father. That's like, like, like Zeus, you know? It's like a, a mythical. Do you hear what I'm saying? 
It's like a two-faced one. You know, it, I'll love you as long as you're good, but the moment you don't, I'm going to wipe you out. That's not a good father. The Bible says if we being evil know how to give good gifts to, to our children, how much more will our Heavenly Father give us good things? How many of you guys, when your kids messed up, you killed them? I mean, sometimes you wanted to, right? But how many, like, I see kids here, so obviously, I see you're here, so obviously you guys survived, right? And the Bible calls us evil, barely. There's a few times I barely got up. I remember one time I was late, I was going to join the band, and I was playing football, and I was tired, and I didn't want to go march, because I'd had a football game that night, and, and I was like, Mom, I was like, like, I'm not getting up and going, and my mom opens the door and knocks us. She, she's like, you got to get up and go. You made that commitment. You don't have to go ever again, but you're going right now. And I was like, Mom, I don't want to. And so I went back to sleep and I hear this bang on the door. My mom wasn't real big. I mean, she was short, you know. And I hear this bang on the door and she says, if you want to live to see tomorrow, <laughs> you will get up. See, I was more afraid of her than I was my dad, right? Because I, she meant it. Like, like I knew, if I didn't get up, I was going to die or wish I had, right? So I did. I got up, right? But we have a God that loves us, a God that sent his son for us, a God who says, you know what? I, want, I don't just want a relationship with you where you look to me as a far off God that you have to dot every I and cross every T because the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But then it goes on and says this. I love this. i got to read this too. I know I'm bouncing around, but it's important for us to know. It says this in Romans 4, Romans 3 actually, 21. But now the righteousness from God apart from the law has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. The righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to some who believe. To what? To all who believe. I always hear, all I ever hear, hear quoted, like when I was growing up, was for all of sin and falling short of the glory of God. You're rotten, 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 rotten. I'm like, that's not what God's saying. He's like, I love you so much. You're so valuable that I sent my son, my only son, the son whom I love to die for you. That don't mean I'm a rotten sucker. Do you know what he's saying here? He's like, hey, you all messed up. He's like, your salvation is not in your do. Your salvation is in your who, and your who is in me. And whether you know him now or you don't know him yet, the Bible says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Guess what? He paid for the sins of everyone once and for all, like the three musketeers, one for all and all for one, once and for all. He's just like, I just turn around, see me, see me through all the, all the fuzz, see me through all, all the crap, see me through all the stuff, just turn around and you will find me because I love you and I'm for you and, and whom the sun sets free is free if they do things right. It's free indeed. You know, see, being a preacher's kid, like I always had to be perfect. And the thing was, is it's so fake because I wasn't perfect. And everybody knew I wasn't perfect, but they expected me to be perfect. My dad was the most perfect man I ever met. Like he didn't smoke, he didn't cuss, he didn't drink, he didn't chew, he didn't do. Like he had all this list of things he did, but I guarantee you he wasn't perfect. He made mistakes. And even if you dot every one of those things, if you don't have Jesus and realize who you are in him, it's not going to set you free. Because you're going to depend on yourself. It says this. I love this. Because he says, says, but the righteousness from God apart from the law has been made known to which the law and the trumpets, the prophets, the law and the prophets testify. The righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. What is glory again? It's that kavod. It's that weightiness, right? That's just so heavy. It's that heaviness that draws 
all men unto him. Guess in heaven, you know, they're, they're singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, right? And, and they, they can't even, all they can do is sing because they feel his glory and they feel the weightiness and they feel the heaviness, a good heaviness, right? They feel that, that kavod. They feel that weightiness that's coming from the cough from the inside out, which means that what's inside you is able to bend and shape the things around you. That's why prayer is so important. The righteousness that comes from God for all of sin and fall short of the glory, the kavod uh, of God and are justified with a price. Are justified what? And actually it says, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented him as a sacrifice and atonement through faith in his blood. He that did this to demonstrate his justice because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in their works. Faith in Jesus. It says that it's for all who believe all have sinned and all are justified freely by his grace. All, man. Not just the dishwater soap or the detergent. Right? Right? And so it's important that we get this glimpse of him because of who Jesus is. And when we see Jesus and we present Jesus, guess how it, we can just live for him, man. I mean, like one of the things I've been really concentrating on is, hey, Father, thank you. I, I'm not doing it when I drive as much. <laughs> I'm tired of scaring people, you know. But, but, hey, Father, thank you. We come into his gates with Thanksgiving. We enter his courts with praise, right? That song, this is, and, um, and I, it will make you glad or something like that. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice because he has made me glad. We have full access to the creator of the universe. Can you imagine the glory that he has to make stuff so powerful and so, so minute and so, so grand at the same time? And he says, you're my son. You're my daughter. I love you so much. I want to have a relationship with you. That's pretty, in fact, I want to have a relationship with you so much that I'm going to send my son, my only son, and he's going to give his life so that you can have a freedom and, and a clear conscience and a hope. And know that now, guess what? We can come to the Father. We don't have to carry a sacrifice because the Bible says Jesus died once and for all. He was and is our sacrifice. And now we can close our eyes, come to the Father and say, Hey, Father, thank you. I thank you that, that you're working this out. I just see that your promises say all your promises are yes and amen. So, Father, I thank you that you're providing this. I thank you for your healing here, and I just give you the praise. I, it just feels so awesome that you're here with me, and I just want to rest in you. That's, a, that's it. Just going into our own, go, going into ourselves. If we're the temple of the Holy Spirit, guess who lives in us? God. Like, I know I keep saying it and saying it and saying it, it's because I have to say it because sometimes I forget it. Like, am I the only one that struggles with that? Because I got to get in trouble, get something's going bad. Oh, Father, help me. And I'm looking up there, and, and he's like, what are you looking there for? <laughs> What's the best place? If you could hide God anywhere where no one would look, where would you hide him? In here. It's genius. God's a genius. Like, you think Al Einstein and Tesla are geniuses, and they were, but compared, they're nothing, man. All they, they didn't know anything except what he gave them, right? And, and so it's just, just awesome to me to think about how we can go to him and know. 
I used to say, everybody ever pray? And like, I want to pray for something, but I better have it, everything right, because if I don't pray for it just right, God's going to give me something I don't want. <laughs> Come on, am I the only one who's ever done that? What, what a poor opinion we'd have of, of him, right? And so now I just like, Father, thank you that, that you said you'd, you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. You know what we're saying? That's, okay, God, I got this. I don't need it. What have we done that with Jesus? Actually, they did do that with Jesus. That's what religion does. He says, okay, God, I got this. I don't need you. That's what they did when the, the Ten Commandments come down the mountain. They're like, yeah, thank you, but we, we got this. We can keep all that. Man, it was intended not for them to keep. It was intended for them to say, hey, we need you. We can't do this. But in you, we can. So I love that. I, I wrote this note down. I heard it. I don't remember where I, the, where I heard it from, but it says this. The height of arrogance is the height of control of those who create God in their own image. Now listen to this one more time because it's really powerful. The height of arrogance is a height of control of those who create God in their own image. The Bible says that we were made in his image. But we're always trying to make him into something that fits into our box, into our image, into what we think. And when we do that, do you know what he does? He just blows the doors right off of it. Why? Because he's so big, man. We, like I, I say that, and I imagine, and I picture it, and I promise you it's trillions times even greater than we ask or think or imagine or even ponder about. He's that much bigger bigger and better. His love for us, what we think we feel, is so much more. Because love isn't something he does. Love is something he is. Light isn't something he shines. Light is who he is. The scripture says this in John. John 1. In the beginning was the Word. And that Word's not the King James Bible. Right? Thank God for the King James Bible. What was he talking about? Jesus. In the beginning was the Word. It's capitalized. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, to a Western mind, we look at it and we think, God, you know, yeah, he's God. But that word God, if you see G, capital G, little O, little D, what does it mean? It means Elohim. Him. The Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, we're all in on it. You were made in him, and you were made with the intent of him loving you, and God knew from the very beginning. Now, it gets even better. Watch this. And the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Much of the time we think, well, God said I'm going to send my son, so I guess Mary's going to have a baby, and that's the first time she ever shows up. Right? Whoop, just. He's like, no, I was there from the beginning. You know what's even crazier? He says, before he even created the foundations of the earth, he thought of you. Whew. You know what that means? We're in him. If we ever get this, like, it'll change your life. And I say that because, like, I'm slow sometimes. Like, not as slow as they are in, in some states south of where I'm from. <laughs> right? But, but sometimes I need all the help I can get. Through him all, through who? Through him. All things were made. And without him, nothing was made that has been made. Listen, if in him and through him were all things made, what makes us think we can live or do anything without him? God and the Holy Spirit didn't even do it without him. And we think we can? 
What makes us think we can do anything without God? I just don't mean Jesus. It's crazy. It says, in him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. I love this because John probably, he was the last disciple to, to write this. And then you got Revelation, and that's a revelation of Jesus Christ. And we miss it so much because we're waiting for him to come back. And he's trying to reveal, this is Jesus right now. This is who he is. And he lives inside you. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Let him live in you. In him we live and move and have our being. Now, do I believe he's coming back? Yeah, I do. But I believe he's here too. And he's here in you. That's another, another message, right? In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. He is the light, man. He is the way. He is the truth. He's everything that we're ever going to need. Everything we hope for everything we dreamed of, and more. There came a man, and then it talks about um, John the Baptist. Let me skip over here, because I'm, I'm always out of time. Out of, I don't, actually, I didn't, didn't run out of things to preach. I just ran out of time to do it. There, it's so awesome. It says, in, in Colossians, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may pray, please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with, with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father. Again, what's it talking about? Who, I love this because it's so, being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might. It's not our power, it's not our strength, but it's His. Who has qualified you, say I'm qualified, He's qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. That's good news. You're qualified. Yeah, you've sinned. You're still sinning. We all mess up. We all make a mistake. But he didn't love us because we're perfect. He loves us because he's perfect. And his love is perfect. And when we get into a relationship like that, then it's like we can't help but want, want to please him. Can't help but, it's like, I love you so much. I want, what, how can I help you? What can I do? Anybody ever like, like when you first start dating? Because all you do is like, hey, I'll help you with this, I'll help you with that. And then you get married and like, you wash the dishes. I ain't touching them. <laughs> Why do I have to take the trash out? You know? But not when you're first, right? It's like, oh, I'll take that out for you, honey. Don't break a nail. <laughs> right? I, am I right? And then that's the same relationship and love. God says, you know what? Return to your first love. Come back to me. Return to me. You're like, oh, I love Jesus. I'm saved. I'm not talking about salvation from not going to heaven. I'm talking about having salvation and a relationship with him right here. Because I'm telling you, if we don't have a relationship with him now, it is just like hell. But it's here on earth. We get to choose. What do you choose? 
I choose life and I choose Him. Amen. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to learn more about us, check out our website at www.silverlakebaptist.org.